that'll be good. So we'll we'll maybe let him um, take another stab at that. And so uh, how we we're going to start our little session today was to talk about kind of an origin story for the big six. Um, and we were chatting a little bit earlier. Uh, I am so excited about superheroes and superhero movies and Marvel and all kinds of things that are coming up here. And so I wanted to just visit a little bit about the Big Six origin story. And when we're able to get Mike in to visit a little bit more about about that, um, we'll, we'll, I, I think we can still start with a couple of our origin stories. So um, I'll put myself on the spot. Uh, just quickly and say you know, my first experience with the big six was as a school library endorsement student and I'll never forget um, having to take a quiz on the big six stages and believe it or not at, and that was mm, 26 or seven years ago now um, believe it or not I did not get all of the answers correctly um, and so that moment that that memory has haunted me forever and so over the years as I've had the opportunity to work with um, the big six and to work with my colleagues um, it's it's one of the moments in time where I thought um, I I I really have benefited over the years from um, having this process of, of, of thinking about how I'm going to solve information problems um, and not ever wanting to have a moment of panic where I didn't feel like I had um, information power at, at my control. So um, I really feel like the big six and what it's given me um, in, in my personal life and career as a superpower that I have. So John, what's your earliest big six memory, your origin I, story? I like your framing device because um, cause it's true. It does feel like you, I just, I, I did feel like I discovered something that was so useful with such a tool, you know, it was, mm -hmm. and um, there was the before and there was the after, at least in terms of um, being an educator and, um, you know, now, you know, being a researcher and kind of looking at, you know, how, um, you know, how, how is this actually, you know, why do I, why did it work so well? Um, so for me, I was a, a school librarian and our district had a research process and um, I did uh, work with students and with uh, teachers in the building on doing the big research project. So we had to kind of haul that thing out, you know, once a year to do those research projects. Um, and it was uh, an eight step process. Um, mm -hmm. And I always found it difficult to remember all eight. So I had, to, I as the instructor um, was always looking, you know, at, um, you know, document, documentation. So, so anyway, when, when I, a uh, um, uh, staff member came up to me and said that, you know, how, did you ever hear about the big six? And I took a look at it and I thought, okay, there's that, 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 that. Yep, it checks all the boxes and in six steps, not eight steps. So it made it mm -hmm. easier. And mm -hmm. it just was uh, um, one of those eye-opening moments that, you know, this is actually really easy to use. Um, and I've since come to recognize how it fits just sort of in everyday information problem solving, not just the big research project. So, you know, that's my, you know, that's kind of what I'm doing to share this power, the superpower is to talk about how um, we can apply it every day every way in every situation um, it doesn't have to be this something that we have to kind of remember take it off the shelf and remember it once a year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and i think when the super three was introduced too I mean, that just kind of um really brought um you know what i learned and what i'd really started to apply in my, my own work to um, a place where I knew students of all ages could could really um, begin to utilize that very simple, you know, three words to describe how they were going to approach something. And so very much like you, um, I was a high school librarian and English teacher. And so, you know, the first applications that I did as a teacher were with larger research projects. I, I teach taught government course um, and big research project with that. 
And so um, one of the great satisfactions is that having over the course of of a year with this group of students each year over, you know, 10, 12 years, um, the feedback that that I got after some of those kids had gone on to college was that they were still using that approach, whether it was writing college papers um, or in some of them as they were pursuing uh, careers in um, biology or, or what have you, they were still using that framework of the big six stages to uh, approach the work that they were doing. And so that's, it's nice that, you know, when, when students um, really begin to internalize and to have it really be a metacognitive process that they use that, um, you know, and then they use that later in life. They're, they're still using, using those approaches, that, that way of thinking, um, and it helps them be successful in their future pr- pursuits, too. So, you know, and the research um, is backing that up. You know, if you take a look at the work of Project Information Literacy, um, you know, it's exactly what they're finding is that the habits that we all develop, you know, in our, mm-hmm. you know, K-12 school years are the yeah. ones we carry over into college and career. Mm-hmm. So it is critical for um you know, those of us who are in education um, to do what we can to make sure that students have the most effective skill sets um, before they finish school so that mm-hmm. they don't have to, you know, rely on ineffective strategies um, after, you know, after graduation, you know, and so, um, you know, one of the other uh, superpowers that yes. this, um affords is also planning, right? It's a superpower for um, educators as well, school librarians, classroom teachers, uh, and others. Because what I found is that, you know, before I learned a lot um, more about um, the big six and information problem solving, my lessons as a school librarian all focused on location, right? Mm -hmm. Locating information, accessing information, you know, how do we find it? How do we find books on the shelf or um, online information resources and using databases? And the thing is, finding all that information is only one step of the entire process, right? right. And recognizing that there are other stages uh, helped me identify those skill sets that are attached to those other stages and needed to be explicitly taught. Mm-hmm. So um, it really did improve my instructional planning and also uh, made me, um, you know, I think I did a better job of assessing students' information problem solving readiness um, right. because it wasn't just, well, can they do a Google search? And, you know, and again, going back to the research, when we ask students, are you information literate? The first thing they think of is, well, yeah, because I can look up something on Google when we know that that you know, that that's just part of the process and that doesn't help students actually solve problems or complete tasks. Mm-hmm. And that I, I like the workplace, right? Yeah. Oh, it absolutely does. And I think what you said too about assessing students, um, you know, if, if we have a way that we define the information problem solving and then we're able to look at those little 12 or stepping back to the big six or even the super three, that lens allows us as, as teachers and for those who guide, um, whether it's pre-service teachers or, or whoever it is that we're teaching, um, to be um, basically more thoughtful or even to be able to diagnose where the process breaks down. If I'm really struggling with a pr- particular part of the process, maybe it isn't the, the ability to um, put together a search that's going to get some results. Maybe it's that you know, I needed to back up to, you know, task definition and really understand, um, did I refine the question? Did I think ahead to the possible range of sources that that I might be able to look at? So I I like it from that diagnostic or that assessment um, standpoint as well. Uh, and And I think that's where we can really make a difference in the learning process for, for any student in, in any particular content area or um, discipline that they're studying. Yeah. You know, and I like you mentioned the metacognitive aspect of it. And I think that that's where we try and get to. I mean, even as adults, once we sort of, once we sort of understand our behaviors, and let's just use the example of our information behaviors, um, a little yeah. bit better, we can self-diagnose. 
And mm-hmm. oftentimes it's an issue of, you know, I, you know, I've been paralyzed by having to, you know, not knowing how to do something like, um, okay, let's just say um, a plumbing problem in the house. Like I right. just don't know how to approach it because I have no idea what is the real issue. And sometimes the issue is, I don't know where to get the, the help that I need with this problem. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's not the problem itself, you know, right. cause I have some idea and you know, it's, it's more a matter of like, well, I don't know exactly how to find someone like the best person to help me out here. And that's, what's paralyzing me. And so once you sort of recognize that, okay, this is the aspect of the problem I'm really struggling with. You feel a little bit more empowered, right? Mm-hmm. To use our mm-hmm. superpowers today, um, to then, you know, take action. So um, speaking of superheroes, um, yeah. let's check and see if we can get Mike here because um, many people may have tuned in um, hoping to hear a little bit from Mike. So um, if yeah. I tap out, um, okay. well, well, are you getting a request uh, for joining the conversation with both of Not, us on or just? N- no. Uh-uh. Well, okay, so I, 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 yeah, do you want to go ahead and, and tap you out, can... tap me out somehow? I'm and not sure. I'll, I'll get, I'll let you, let you go there and we'll see if we can get Mike in again. So, um, Mike has been so patient and we even practiced, uh, we, we play on the head. Um, we actually, actually followed through and went through the steps of connecting using this tool. Um, we've done it successfully several times. And now, as I was saying earlier, we, we probably need to step back and diagnose what um, some of the issues are and maybe get some help, like John was saying, in um, helping be more successful with this platform. So I think that, um, oh, Mike, go ahead. All right, we've got him, we've got him. I knew we could be successful, and if we just talk long enough and, and think and, and let the problem present itself, then, then we'll, we'll be able to make it through. So um, Mike is getting added in here. Thanks for your continued patient, patience. So let's see, Mike, um, I'm going to approve you again. Looks like we just need to give it a second try. And we're almost there. Yep. Finally there oh, you geez. are. Yes. Oh, Mike, thank goodness. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> and I can hear you. We can see you. So exciting. Uh, sorry. I, I, I don't know what I finally did or how it finally worked, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. But ask. we will go through. This is very it, frustrating. It is, but we are going to review again. Um, and we are going to okay. evaluate, which is, you know, a very important part of the big right. six process and to see how we can do better next time. Um, we love technology and all of us love to um, engage. We're just having a conversation a little bit about how wonderful it is to be able to um, connect as people um, through technology and to have these conversations mm-hmm. and to share them with a wider audience. So um, you heard from uh, John a little bit ago, John Marino. Um, Christy Mockstutz is, is on board with us too to help support as we move forward. But um, let's just kind of cut to the chase, Mike, and um, where we've been kind of using this uh, metaphor of a superhero. And I'll just say you are one of my superheroes um, and such a good friend. And I appreciate very much the time that you're going to spend with us this afternoon. But here's, here's the deal. So you, have, you are the father figure. You are the father of the big six. And I want you just talk to us a little bit about how this became part of your life work life's work and why is the big six the superpower that everyone should have Hmm. okay well i'll I'll try to do it somewhat quickly um and it was back uh, when i was a teacher librarian in um in a high school and i had been working uh, uh both K-12 and stuff. I was not at a university or anything. I was in the field. And I was um, asked to come and work with the New York State Education Department on creating a K-12 curriculum Mm -hmm. for library skills. 
and I went to that meeting and it was just another one of those laundry lists of sources meeting and that's what they were doing and I was getting more and more frustrated and I finally said because uh, you know I'm so yes. shy and everything um, I finally said this is ridiculous that we're 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 just we're teaching things and and information literacy and library skills is a process and I really went through and I said you know it's define the task it's um, determine your strategy for finding the information, it's locating the information, it's using the information, and it's putting it together and presenting it and somehow writing it up. And that was it. There were actually five stages and stuff. And they kind of semi-adopted that and whatever. But that, anyway, a, a, a couple of months later, I was at a conference and I was introduced to this guy, Bob mm -hmm. Berkowitz. And I was talking to him about it and stuff. And he latched on right away and we really agreed and it was but he said but mike you left out a stage and i said a step uh, what, what are you talking about he said well after you've presented or written it up or you've got to evaluate mm -hmm. and i said of course and that was the beginning of the big six it was also the beginning of bob's and my partnership and uh, i went back and worked with education department and but they 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 still had an addendum to the curriculum with all of the laundry list. No one embraced it. And it was frustrating. And then uh, a little later, uh, I, w I uh, started working at Syracuse University and teaching and doing things. And it became more and more clear that not only is this process the library research process and the skills process, but it's a generalizable process. It could be used anywhere for anything. And we do it all the time and we do it every mm -hmm. day and everybody's doing it in every possible situation. And Bob and I wrote some books and we've done some things on it, whatever. But I believe more in the big six today than I ever have in my entire life. I, I, I really think that in today's incredibly information rich environment. You know, when we started the big six, it was really pre-web, pre-internet, a lot of those things. And, and the, the essential information problem in those days was scarcity. Mm -hmm. How can we find scarce information? I mean, that was in the days when you'd go to a, an academic library and you'd have to uh, have a, uh, an interview with a librarian who would do a search for you. And then you had to pay for the search. Right. And the copies and, 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 so, and, and, and yeah. And the output wasn't always what we can access today. What, what you wanted, but there was, no, it, there was no interaction and feedback and whatever. Today, the problem is different. It's one of abundance and overload. So instead of scarcity, we have overload. And so it's so really selecting from among the different things. But if we just focus on the search and the, and the say, the websites or the... Uh, the different places we get the information from, the articles or whatever. That's just the, the middle part of the problem. <coughs> We're not focusing on the, on the task part and figure out what we really have to do or the different ways that we put it together and evaluate. So, and again, I, 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 I'm a big uh, sports fan. You know, it's baseball season and is coming and we're about to get into spring training and stuff like that. Well, Winning in baseball or doing well is an information activity. And we see this with big data today. We see with the internet. We see this with, with all the different services. So for me, Big Six is, is uh, even more essential. And we talk about data literacy or digital literacy and all those others. They're all part of the broader information literacy, information problem solving process. Well, and I thank you for that. I think one of the things that, that struck me the most over the years, too, is that with an overabundance of information, more information than, than, than we can certainly digest at any given moment, what you need is something that allows you to look at the world and make sense of it. And that can't be something that's overcomplicated. Um, and, and when you're talking no. about laundry lists, um, you know, as, as someone who's worked with standards over the years and curriculum, um, you know, that overcomplicated view of what students should know and be able to do kind of falls under the weight of its own um, complexity. And so stepping back, giving students, this is to me the superpower part of it, that really mm -hmm. straightforward way of solving problems 
and interacting with the information around them is so much more powerful than even, you know, this incredible amount of information that we can access at any given time. So it's that clarity of, of the process and that commitment to the process well, you know, that's important. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Kalei. When you, when you look at it in the metaphor of the superhero or the superpower, mm -hmm. all right, uh, a superhero, you know, Peter Parker walks around with his spidey sense, but he doesn't use it all the time necessarily. He's not, you know, he's not turning the power on and then figuring out what he's going to use mm -hmm. it for. He's got this power, and then as it's necessary, he'll spin a web or do a thing, or Superman will use his x-ray vision or, or whatever. It's the same with the big six. We have the big six, um, like Batman and our belt yeah. and whatever. We have it ready to go. When faced with an information problem, we can pull out our superpower, which is the big six, and then drill down a little and say, well, which part of the superpower do right. we need? Right. You know, do we, we need x-ray vision or do we need super hearing or, or the speed or whatever? And in the big six, what it is is, oh, no, I, what I really need right now is the superpower about how to organize this mm -hmm. stuff. So I'm in synthesis and figuring out how I pull it all together and make sense of it. Or I need that part of the superpower where I figure out what the heck I'm supposed to do in the first right. place and mm -hmm. those things. And that's why it's, a, it's actually a very useful metaphor. Mm -hmm that the six stages are six different superpowers that a big sixer right. has. Right, and being able to, at and, that moment of decision-making, know what to use and when. And I think, too, I have to extend the metaphor a little bit further, you know, not every superhero has a successful first outcome when they employ one of their powers. And what right. the process allows you to do is to make that pivot. Okay, um, this didn't quite work what part of this process didn't go so well and what direction do I need to go next to, to extend and, yeah. and, and to really, um, to be successful. Yeah. So, um, here, you know, it's yeah. funny that, um, um, the folks in, uh, North Carolina, um, uh, have done the super three superhero yes. or super, th which, which is a book and stuff. And they talk about plan, do and review and that stuff. And I encourage everybody to look at their some of they've got some videos and they've got a book and stuff like that. But we haven't really thought of the big six in, in a superhero mm -hmm. context. And maybe that's something that's an article or some posting we might right. do to explore our superpower with the big six, because it really is a superpower. And that and just that awareness of the power. Remember in the. In, in the origin stories, it's when your superhero first becomes aware of their power, when Wonder Woman, I guess, becomes aware of, of her powers and the lasso or something like that, and how you use it and how they, they tame their superpower and make it work mm -hmm. for them. That, that'd be kind of fun to do in a big six concept. So, and again, it can be for anything. Right. So do you see that as part of the future? Is, uh, and, and what do you... What do you want to see as the future of, of the big six with, with all of our, our partnerships yeah. and, and the things that we've talked about and, and have planned, but what do you want the future yeah. to be? Yeah, well, for me, I mean, I, it, it's been a great run for me as a, uh, you know, one of the big six superheroes. I'll just accept yes. that, okay? Because I've spoken to thousands of, of, of audiences and, uh, in all different kind of contexts and whatever, but uh, I, you know, I'm I'm retired, so I'm I'm the retired superhero kind, kind, and it's time to turn it over. And but I want to see it live live on. And I, I love one of my dreams is that 50 years, 100 years from now, in a very different world in terms of the things that are on the surface or the way we do things, the way that we communicate, the way that we might live, the way that we might travel, or where we might travel, and all the things that we might do, that this process of information problem solving, of being able to, to take a step back and think about what's the task and what am I doing? What are the different options available to me in terms of strategies and information seeking strategies, location and access, use of information synthesis and value, that that will mm -hmm. live on. And so I am so pleased to hand it off to the, the next Justice League or whatever you want to <laughs> the call The big six.org. Which is, 
Right, thebigsix.org, which is you, Kogale, and John, and Christy, and others. To, to And it's freely available. You don't need to spend a nickel to Big right. Six, to use the Big Six, to learn about it, to teach it, whatever. Um, and, and now that there's a nonprofit really charged with um, nurturing and keeping the Big Six for future use and, and developing it further. I'm, I'm really pleased and excited about it. And uh, uh, it's taken us a while to get things organized and stuff, but I, I, I think it's really exciting. Well, thank you. Yeah, we're really excited too. And um, so the only other question I kind of wanted to ask you too is um, when uh, – when, when someone is just beginning to learn, um, like what's that first step that they need to take in order to um, learn for themselves what the big six is all about? How do they begin to nurture that superpower for themselves? Right. That, are you you're talking about just a, any person, yes. whether they're a, a, a second grader or a doctoral student or, or a, a te teacher. I think or a teacher, a... especially teachers, because that teacher is okay. in the middle. They're, they're, they're the person who right. can guide. And how do they get started? Right. So, so as teachers, if we start to think of the body of knowledge of learning if, uh, that we want our students to gain, we really think about knowledge and skills. Mm -hmm. Knowledge and skills. We think about content and process. Mm -hmm content and process. So big six is a vocabulary, a set of really verbs in a way for you to talk about process. Mm -hmm. And so what I would encourage teachers to do is when there's an assignment, when there's something you're trying to get across to the class, just take a, a back from a minute and analyze it from a big six perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's, if it's homework or it's uh, a, an assignment, what is the task? What information is needed for the task? What's the strategy? How do we locate that information? And, and so forth. And if teachers start to do that, if they start to look at their own teaching and learning, and particularly their assignments from their students' perspective, and, and then start to think about that, and even brainstorm it out with the students, I think that's a, a great way to, to start yeah. it, to start to see the connection and that big six gets you a vocabulary to talk about mental processes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that metacognition thing. It's a way for us to say, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's task definition. Oh, yeah, that's about. And realize that the big six is not prescriptive. It's not rigid. You can jump right into the middle, right. you know, um, and uh, but it loops back and different. But at different times, we exercise different actions, different skills in order to fulfill a problem, to, to solve a problem, to get mm -hmm. something done or whatever. So that's what I would really encourage. And particularly classroom teachers, teacher librarians can certainly help because they have super, super powers in terms of information seeking and right. use. Right. Um, but uh, classroom teachers have a superpower in task mm -hmm. definition. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really know what they want kids to be able to do in order to demonstrate that they've learned mm -hmm. something. And that's the task. So um, that, that's what I think, to realize that learning is a series of information problems and solving those, whoops, and, uh, and, and accomplishing it. So that, that would be my I suggestion. think that's great. Um, on the Big Six Facebook page, um, we've had some great interaction recently with a couple of teachers who have shared lesson plans. And that's one of the things that, that we'd like to help do and to extend that offer. Um, looking at lesson plans from that big six perspective, you know, what parts of this lesson really yeah. are in task definition? What parts of the lesson are really asking students to um, begin to think about the information seeking strategies, location and access? Um, you know, the teacher really mm -hmm. can prescribe, um, depending on the grade level, what that synthesis looks like, what the product is going to look like. But um, we would love it if um, some others would like to share their lesson plans and um, be happy to kind of review that and, and get back to you with some feedback about how lesson plans are, are uh, really model and reflect 
the the stages of the big six, how they help students yeah. um, to practice and know those those um, things very specifically. So really want to invite everybody to take a look at the big six Facebook page. But also you can always be in touch with us at the big six dot org is the new URL for the refreshed website for our nonprofit organization and invite you to learn more um, through both of those methods, but probably most importantly, know that you can reach out to any of us. We're going to continue on a monthly basis, if not more often, to do these Facebook Live events. We're going to practice. We're going to plan. We're going to review what we did today and make sure that we're we're on board um, and can can move forward with a little bit more finesse and grace um, through this process. But at the end of the day, it's about connecting with us um, individually and with the big six as a kind of a worldwide community as well. We know that there are lots of you folks out there, um, those who are watching, if you and whether you're live with us right now or um, when you watch the recording later on, sh give us a shout out. Tell us where you're watching from, um, where you're learning from, and we'd love to hear from you in terms of feedback about what you've heard today as well as what we have to offer on the Facebook page, as well as on the big6.org website. Um, so thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, I really appreciate your You're persistence uh, because we know that even though the best laid plans um, are, are made and we've practiced, um, sometimes we have a challenge that we have to overcome. So I really appreciate that you were, um, used your, your good thoughts and, and process and, and got us together here today. And um, with that, <laughs> um, I want to thank Christy and John also who helped support us today. And again, welcome everyone. Um, you know, give us your comments and thoughts. Send us your lesson plans. You can do that through the Facebook page or um, you can contact us through the big6.org webpage. And we'd love to hear from you and share you know, both our perspective about what it means to be a big six superhero and what it means for our students and the futures that they have in becoming really powerful with their ways of approaching information problem solving. So with that, I'm going to sign off for today and watch the Facebook page. We'll be setting another date for another session. And we'd love to have other guests as well. Uh, we'll get this Facebook Live thing down, and we'd love to hear from you. So thanks again for your time this afternoon. Take care and stay warm.